So let's get in and start talking about how we select the breakers and notice in the top line it talks about mounting inches. And a couple of things that I want to point out with uh, that very top sentence, and really the first thing that we'll talk about is the, the note in red. One and two pole breakers must be selected to balance the load in the panel board. And if you look at that photograph, this is a three pole breaker. So this, the, that red note would not apply to this particular photograph. But I'm going to show you where it would apply if that was indeed a one or two pole breaker. The, the one thing that I do want to point out in that photograph is this gives you a really good angle on those uh, bus stabs in the, in the shroud that connect onto the, the bus bars. You can easily see the stab that resides on the top of the bus bar, and you can see the stab that resides on uh, below the bus bar. But if this was a two-pole breaker, and we wanted it to connect to A and C phase, that middle connector would not be there. This particular breaker, being a three-pole breaker, connects to A, B, and C phase. If this particular breaker was a two-pole breaker and we only wanted to connect to B and C phase, then the upper right-hand stab would not be there. If it was a single-pole breaker and we wanted to connect to A phase, it would be shown, that stab would be shown uh, where that upper right-hand stab is. When we talk about balancing the load, Theoretically, if you have three identical breakers, let's say you have three 15-amp single-pole breakers, one of them should connect to A phase, the other should connect to B phase, and the third should connect to C phase in order to balance the load. If you have two-pole breakers, theoretically, if you have three two-pole breakers, theoretically one should have an AB connection, another one should have a BC connection, and the third should have an AC connection. And when we talk about the breaker must be selected, what it actually is is a suffix to the breaker catalog number. So for example, a single pole breaker connecting to A phase would have a suffix that would identify that it's connecting to A phase. B phase would have a different suffix. C phase would have a different suffix. So if you're doing this on the system, you're doing this on the product selectors, or you're doing it in the easy selection tool. You don't have to worry about that. We do all that work for you. We will balance the load if you have three identical breakers. But where you need to be responsible for the suffix of that catalog number is by chance if you're ordering a replacement breaker or you're building a job manually. The second paragraph from the top is step number one, as I look at a customer's bill of material and I know I'm going to use an eyeline panel board. The very first thing that I want to identify on my customer's bill of material is what is going to be the largest branch mounted device. And by branch mounted device, I don't necessarily mean a branch breaker. It could be a branch mounted back fed main breaker. And once I identify that largest branch mounted frame, it's going to drive me into one of these interiors. For example, as we look here at this HCM interior, if I looked at my customer's bill of material and the largest frame breaker was a J frame, I could use this HCM interior. But if I identify that the largest frame breaker is a P frame, I'm going to I'm going to have to bump up to an HCP. And then finally, if we look at the HCRU, the R frame breaker will only fit into that HCRU panel. So by identifying the largest frame breaker that's going to be mounted in the branch area of the panel board, it's going to drive you into the proper selection 
of the most cost-effective interior. Now, on all the conventional interiors, the third bullet talks about breakers being mounted on both sides of the interior. That's the double row construction. And then you have to fill in, uh, the f next bullet item down talks about blank fillers. We're gonna talk about them in a little more detail in just a second. And then the very bottom bullet item here on this page is a good suggestion in that it doesn't hurt to just quickly make a sketch of what this interior is gonna look like, especially if you're dealing with one of those wide side interiors. Remember, if you're dealing with a wide side interior, those high impacity breakers will only fit on one half of the panel. So if you draw a sketch, it might be an aha moment where you think, oh, gosh, all of those breakers are not gonna fit on that wide side and you may have to go to a, a second panel. So we've talked about mounting inch requirements quite a bit. And everything with eye line is built around mounting inch requirements. And we talk about mounting space or mounting inch requirements are kind of synonymous with each other. And if you think about NQ and NF, we don't really do that. We, we talk about with NQ and NF, a, a one pole break, a, a, a one pole breaker takes one space, a two pole breaker takes two spaces, et cetera. And, and with I-Line, that all kind of goes out the window. Everything with I-Line is built around one and a half inches of bounding space. If you look at these two columns, and this is really two tables in one, the left-hand four columns are the lower ampacity breakers. The four columns on the right are the higher ampacity breakers. And if you look at the, the far right-hand columns of each of those tables, notice those mounting inch requirements. Every dimension is divisible by an inch and a half. Every critical dimension of eye line is divisible by an inch and a half. And you'll see that when we get in and we start looking at the interiors as well. And as you look at the left-hand table, which are the smaller ampacity frame breakers, you kind of get the feeling that a one-pole device takes one and a half inches, a two-pole device takes three inches, and a three-pole device takes four and a half. And, and that does hold true for the smaller frame breakers. But if you look at the right-hand four columns, notice, for example, a P-frame, a two and three pole breaker, they both take up nine inches of mounting space. An R-frame takes, takes up 15 inches of mounting space. So, so going back to this information here, and we look at paragraph number two, bullet number two, select the interior based on the largest frame breaker. That's step number one, and then it goes on to say, add up all of the breaker mounting inches on my customer's bill of material. So once I identify the largest frame breaker, I would then go to this table, and I would add up all of the mounting inches required for every single branch mounted device in that panel. Now my next step is to select the correct interior. And what I've done here is I've done a screen capture of table 100, which just happens to be the HCP uh, table for the selection process. And so I've determined that, for example, my customer's application, the largest frame breaker is a P-frame, which is gonna drive me into this HCP interior. Well, then my next step is getting into the right subtable. Is it a main lug application or is it a main breaker application? Once I'm in the right subtable, then I start looking at the total mounting inches for each of these interiors. And with the HCP, we offer four different varieties, 27 inches total all the way up through 99 inches total. Notice every one of those dimensions is divisible by an inch and a half. But to reemphasize, notice that that column header is titled total 
breaker mounting space. So we have to be aware that we need to divide that number in half because one half of the breakers fit on the wide side in this case, the other half of the breakers fit on the narrow side of the, of the interior. So for example, let's look at the 27 inch. That means I would have 13 and a half inches on the wide side, 13 and a half inches on the narrow side. If that's not enough mounting space, then I bump up to a 45 or a 63 or a 99. Once I arrive at the correct mounting space, the next column is merely the ampacity rating of the main. The next column to the right is a handy little column on these wide side interiors in that it tells you the maximum number of those large frame breakers that you can put into that panel. So maybe you didn't do a sketch and you think, okay, I can get by with a 27 inch interior, but you have two P frame breakers. Well, two P frame breakers are not gonna fit in a 27. I'm gonna to have to bump up to a 45. So let's focus in on the interior assembly and I'm actually gonna blow that number up so we can see it better. And we're gonna kind of dissect that catalog number. The, the prefix is merely the family. So we're in the HCP family. The first two numeric characters get a little tricky. Those first two numeric characters are one half of the total breaker mounting inches rounded up to the nearest whole number. So if we look at the far left where the arrow is pointing at, 27 inches, half of that would be 13.5. We don't want to put 13.5 in our catalog number. So we round that number up to the nearest whole number. Now, in some cases, if we look down here in this red oval, in some cases, it's exactly half in the catalog number. And that's because each of those numbers are divisible by 1.5 inches. But we don't wanna put 1.5 in a catalog number, so we always round up to the nearest whole number. The next two numeric characters make I-Line unique as well. In the catalog number for I-Line, we include the box height. We don't do that with NQ. We don't do that with NF. So knowing this product, I know that an HCP goes into a 42 inch wide interior or enclosure. It's nine and a half inches deep. And so looking at this catalog number, I can tell, easily tell my customer, you're gonna get a 42, 42 inches wide, 50 inches uh, tall and a nine and a half inch deep enclosure right off the interior catalog number. We don't do that with NQ and NF. And then finally, the suffix of this particular example is gonna be the ampacity rating of the interior. In this case, it's a 400 amp. So let's jump over here to the front columns. We've got the column with the door. We've got the column without the door. As I mentioned, without the door is slightly less expensive, but you can add the door in the future. You can order the door as an, as an, an accessory. And then the other thing that I want to point out before we move off of this page is that note above the table that says 1200 amp interiors include the solid neutral, all others without which means you and I, if we're doing this job manual merchandise, we have to order the solid neutral ourselves. With the 1200 amp, it's already included. And so if you look at the oval down below, all of the 1200 amp catalog numbers have an N suffix for the neutral, but in this case, the four, six, and 800 amp varieties do not have the neutral included. Now, if we were to go to the digest and we were to look at an HCM interior, the smaller interior, the note on that particular interior says the 100 amp and the 225 amp include the neutral, all others without, which means that if I look at those two notes collectively, in the smaller interior, the 100 amp and the 225 amp include the neutral, 
In the bigger interiors, the 1200 amp includes the neutral, but in the 400, 600, and 800 amp varieties of both the smaller and the larger interiors, I've got to order the neutral as a separate component. And I'm going to show you how to do that very easily on the next page.